So we added one product and we saw what it looked like in the shopping cart. Let's set ourselves up to be a little bit more advanced in terms of organization. Organization is very important for your customers to be able to find the product. So we are going to create new products, but now we're going to think of the, about them in terms of organization. So we'll say product organization. Put them into categories or tags. So customers can find them easier. A category versus a tag. So category is the big idea, and the tag is the little detail. So a category would be cakes, would be pies, would be, you know, if I'm a tech company, I'm selling cell phones versus tablets. Those are the big ideas. The little details, okay, cakes, it's a chocolate cake. The pie, it's a, it's a pecan pie. The cell phone, it's, you know, it's a, it's a Nokia. The tablet is an iPad. So for cake, chocolate cake, well, I could have a pie that is a chocolate pie. I could have cakes that have pecan. So oftentimes tags can not interchangeable, that's not the right word, but tags can exist in multiple categories. Tablets. I could have an <coughs> iPad tablet and I could have a Nokia tablet. And again, pecan, it could be a pecan pie, pecan cake, pecan cookie. So whatever makes sense for your products and your business, we want to create some of these. Question? That's, sorry, that's has, has to be on one word or two words? They can be multiple words, yes. So it could be, I don't have any good example here, but it could be pecan sugar-free. That could be one tag. So, not just one word, it can be a whole phrase. These will help you when customers search. I will say this will, these will be helpful when customers search. You can organize them in your menu, in your menu bar, your nav bar. Notice how on our site, when we, when we visit site, we have the menu bar right here, home, cart, checkout, etc. Well, what if I have the ability to hover over shop and then a menu opens up and in that menu it says cookies and cakes. So then I click on cakes and it only shows me cake products. If I click on shop, it shows me everything, all the cookies and the cakes and the baked goods, everything. But I can make a drop-down menu to only focus on a specific category. So you can organize them in your menu. You can improve customer discovery. Just a fancy way of saying that your, pers your customer sees one particular cake and they want to see what other cakes do they have. Like when they saw my product over here, this had been then categorized as uncategorized, I didn't do it, but if it had a, a particular category, they'd be able to click on that and show me all products of that. That'd be the same if they go to the menu up here, but when they're already at a product and they see that it's connected, sort of connected to other products, they can discover, they can find more of the product. So the, that's what these are. These are the benefits. Let's, let's set this up. We can create categories or tags before we, can, we make products, or we can make them up after we make products, and even during 
making a product. So we can do this at any point. We've already made one product. It has not been categorized, so we'll go back to do it. But subsequent products, I want to already, already have categories ready and then add the product to the category. So in the dashboard, when you hover over products, we see categories. So let's go here. Products, categories. Product categories for your store can be managed here, etc. We have the default category of uncategorized, which we don't want to use. That is very amateur. It shows that you didn't organize yourself properly. It doesn't help your users because then they can't find your products. So on the left side, name. In Victor's Bakery, I'm going to have cakes. There are other details here. Slug, don't worry about this. This is just how the, how the link will look when the person visits the site. The link up here. It doesn't really matter to worry about it because it'll automatically fill itself with whatever you wrote here. So if I write this cakes, it'll automatically fill it after I save it. So nothing there. Parent category, depending if it makes sense for you, you would do this. In the example here, assign a pattern term to create a hierarchy. The term jazz, for example, would be the parent of bebop and big band. So let's say they're selling music, and they have genres. They have the genre of jazz. Well, in jazz, there's the sub-genre of bebop style jazz and big band style jazz. So we would first create jazz, then we would create a new one and set that the parent is jazz and create the new one as bebop. So it's just more ways to organize. Show me all of the jazz stuff, or only show me the bebop jazz stuff. And we'll do an example of this with, with our product in a moment. This is going to be the parent. Um, description. Descriptions are not prominent by default, however, some themes may show it. Depending on the theme, whatever you write here may or may not be visible easily. And even if it's not visible, it's just more information that could that is there behind the scenes for people to be able to find your product. So for cakes, we're going to say um, standard size, let's say 10 inch, two layer cakes. In general, all of the cakes then are going to be this size and height. Obviously, after the fact, I can, I can come back and change this or remove it. The items in here will be displayed by default. That's fine. I can add a thumbnail graphic so that when they view my screen, Sort of like a preview screen of all of that product. They'll get a thumbnail. Uh, no need to change that. So just click on Add New Category. On the top right, then we have a brand new item. We have cakes. One thing that WordPress does a little bit inconsistently that I don't like is that on some screens, all your options are visible. And on other screens, they're not. Cakes has a bunch of options, but we don't see them until you hover over, and then all of these appear. Edit, delete, view, same thing here. I've seen it on other screens that you see those options right away. I don't know why it's, they're not always visible. Obviously, I'm going to see them at some point. It's not like the screen is collapsed, and then when you open it, it opens up. So I, I'm not sure why they're not visible. But just be aware of that. A lot of times in WordPress, you might have options that you don't even, you don't even know about until you hover over. So try hovering over. So if I wanted to quick edit, full edit, you 
this product right now, this category has zero products. So if I view, there's nothing really to view. This has one product so far. If I view, it'll show me that one product. The, make the default. Right now, this is the default. Uh, it's not really marked, but that's the default. That was the, the first one that existed, so it was the default. When I make a brand new product, unless I change it, the default category will be uncategorized, which I said is amateur, and you, you don't want to keep things uncategorized. So I'm not going to set this to default because everything that I sell is not going to be a cake. But I'm just making you aware of if it makes sense to you, depending on your products and categories, you might want to default so that you don't end up under uncategorized. Let's make two more categories. Pies and cookies. Uh, if you're doing your own idea of your own account, make up whatever makes sense. Let's have three new things besides uncategorized. Let's say we wanted to do subcategories. Let's say we're, we're going to do like, a, like healthy alternatives. So I want to have a top level category of healthy alternatives and then sub levels like this is the one that's sugar free, this is the one that's gluten free, whatever. So let's see how subcategories work. Let's start with, let's just call it alternatives maybe. Alternatives. Healthy is a loaded word, right? Alternatives. So description could be alternative ingredients or so forth. And I will uh, I will add that. So in order for parent the parent categories system to work, we need them to exist first, and then we can select them. So from alternatives, now the parent is the one I made a moment ago. And we'll say here, gluten-free. So gluten-free will be a subcategory of alternatives. If people view alternatives, they will see all products if they of that kind. If they then click gluten-free, it's only the gluten-free of that subcategory. And on the right side, the way that's represented is there's a tab, it's indented, that this is tabbed in under this. <coughs> Low glycemic. <coughs> and that is then a child of the parent category alternatives. Okay, so we've got a few categories. Let's use them now. Does this before that? Does this screen make sense? What categories? How we make them? What they are and such? Does it make sense? So we've got a bunch of categories that are empty, and we've we've created them. We will use them, and then they will be helpful for the customers as we as we'll see how. Let's go back to add a new product. Let's see, our product will be chocolate chip cookie. Let's say our 
famous giant cookie. The big difference from before now is that I've got product categories that appears in its in its little box. So then obviously I would select that this is a cookie. Do you think there's a way to add an item to more than one category? Yep, just turn it on. So if your product makes sense in multiple categories, go ahead and do so. Obviously this cookie would not also be in pies. That doesn't make sense, but it could be the gluten-free one. Maybe it's not one of these alternatives, but it is an alternative in some other way. Maybe it uses, you know, almond flour instead of wheat flour. How specific do I want to be? In my case, I'll just keep it in one category, but you can add multiples. We can add an image in a moment, but yeah, you'll need an image at a certain point. Before that, we have tags. So, categories are the big ideas of what the product is. It's a cookie, and the tags are the details. It's a, it's a chocolate chip cookie, so this is the same with categories in that I could create tags before I make a product, or I can add the tag after I publish the product, or I can add the tag while I'm creating the product. In this case, we have no tags at all, and we're here already, so we might as well add some tags here. And here... Now this is separate with commas, but I would just ignore that. I would type the tag and then click Add. If you want to type multiples at once, you put, you put a comma, but it's still the same as pressing Add, so I don't even know why this is here. But let's say this is chocolate. When the little bubble rotates right here, it's just trying to find how you ever, do you already have that tag. We haven't made any tags, so there's nothing that appears. But I'm about to add chocolate. So this is a chocolate. On the big idea, it's a cookie. On the detail, it's chocolate. And I could, again, also have a chocolate cake and whatever other categories I have. So I add. If I want to remove a tag at this point, I can remove it here. Although, once I, I think that once you type it and add it, it gets added to the main system, so you have to delete the actual tag somewhere else. But if you remove it here, it just removes it from this product. It's either after you add or when you publish. I'm not sure if right now it created the tag. I guess we can check it over here. Let's take a quick segue. No, it hasn't created it yet. So I, I think when we publish it, that's when it will actually create it and then be editable back on tags. Let's see, maybe putting in one more tag here. Um, let's see, this is traditional. Like traditional recipe, however you want. Remember, you can use multiple words. So maybe this is, the, this is like the traditional recipe. Maybe I've got one cookie that is traditional recipe and one that it's like the new avant-garde style of cookie. Add that. Let's add a price plus sale price just to see what that looks in the interface. Let's say that our giant cookie is usually $4, but it's on sale for $2.95. They save two whole dollars. Now that's actually a marketing trick. Are they saving two dollars at this point? No, they're saving one dollar and five cents. But people see more, first the big number on the left, and they see the smaller number on the right less consciously. So if I see four and two, yeah, I'm saving two dollars. No, you're saving one dollar and five cents. Is that product name still cookies? What's that? Product name still cookies. Right, right now I'm still in the cookies. Mm -hmm. 
the cookie I, I, I'm still making, yes. You can set a schedule if you want also just to see what it looks like. We're going to start the sale today and it's going to go until Saturday. All the other details we can, we can get back to them later, but let's say at this point after you turn on a sale price, then you get a schedule. So I'll just schedule it for a few days. Let's publish the product and then see it in the store. Publish visit store. to your to your shop I didn't add a picture to mine so it's just a generic photo and this is nice it shows the little sale badge that stands out and then it shows the old price crossed out and the new price let's see if I if I click on the product itself, the name, it will show me the whole product. Does it show when the... It doesn't... It does not seem to show when the sale ends. I suppose you could write that in the description yourself. All it does is that it says it's sale, but then itself it will shut itself off. You usually don't know when the sale ends. It depends on the product. I know that like on various uh, department stores, they do mention sale this weekend, percentage until a certain date. So it's up to you to decide what you would like. Would you like it just, there's a sale, you don't know when, and there's a value to that because it keeps people coming back. When is it going to end? They keep coming back. If you put in the date that when it does end, for some people, then they'll remember to come back. And some people will say, well, I never remembered, and now it's gone. Let's create one more product and then we'll talk about how we can incorporate this into the menu. Notice this product, once you click on it to view the full details, you see that it is categorized under cookies and it's tagged with chocolate and traditional. If I have more products that are either cookies or have these tags, I will also see them. So I've only got one traditional recipe item. If I click that, it shows me a screen that is only traditional recipe of that product. So let's make a few more products to fill this inventory out a little bit more. Notice from here, I'm in visit site, but from here I still have new product. So instead of going back to the dashboard, and then product, and then new, from anywhere this universal new button is available to us. So, new product. I'm going to add another cookie. Let's add the most fun cookie, fun cookie name of all, Snickerdoodle. Does anyone know what a Snickerdoodle is? It's like a sugar cookie alternative with like cinnamon and all this good stuff. So I will always remember that sugar cookie because way back in middle school when I took home ec, we made snickerdoodles and they were so amazing. 
and whenever I find them at the at the bake shops, I I have a bite. But it doesn't compare to the one I made in middle school twenty years ago. <laughs> so just placeholder here. What it doesn't matter. What matters is I want to add categories and tags. So this goes again in the cookies. If you want to, you can put it on these other ones. Um, just to pick something, I'll put it under gluten-free. Now this, this little tab, notice has two tabs. It has all categories and it has most used. All categories will give you a list of all your categories um, alphabetically, but if you constantly use a few under most used, that might be the where you look first. If you've got a lot to scroll through, you look at most used for the common ones. Notice from here I can also create a, a category on the spot. I may have thought of a new category I didn't have before, so you could also create a new category. And product tags this is what I said about as you, once you have some of these that exist, as you start typing, it would pop up to say these are the category, these are the tags with the that you, that you that you made, or select choose from most used. This pops up to tell you these are the ones you've used so far. So I'm going to tag this as. comfort food. So think about using categories and tags in any way that makes sense for your customers to find the product, not just literally chocolate or literally sugar-free, but that's, that's more of a feeling, an emotion, rather than a concrete thing. This is Maybe people are browsing your site and they see things categorized or tagged in interesting ways. And that entices them to click and buy a product that they weren't even thinking of buying. But because it's tagged as comfort food and that does strike a chord in me that, yeah, that is food that I remember that and it's fun from my childhood and I haven't had one in a while, let me buy it. So that's more of that marketing this is beyond the technical aspect of add a tag. This is think in terms of marketing and in terms of sales and in terms of reaching a customer. This one we will say also like just four dollars sure and then um, no sale price and just publish it. Publish it and then let's go look at it in the in in the visit site screen. In the shop, we have three products so far. There's the brand new one. Notice it's alphabetically automatically. I can go preview that one. When I preview it, then I see there's the categories it's related to. Now when I go into cookies, the two cookie products are available. Churros is not. It's not been categorized as that, so it's not there. So here a person specifically went to a category of a product, but they went to that product category by first seeing that it existed here somewhere. Let's make it easier for the users by having the product categories within the menu up here. They hover over shop and that opens up, drops down to show you cookies and uh, cakes and so forth. So from here they decide. I don't want to see everything. I want to go to a certain category. 
let's edit this menu. Go back to the dashboard. This is something for the notes. Menus in WordPress can have pages, posts, products, categories, etc. Default may be the current pages you have only. So I've got some pages right now, and though that's what's in the menu. It doesn't know that I want categories or anything else. You may have multiple menus. I have the ability to switch menus, put these links versus these links. Why might I want to have multiple menus that I can switch out? What if during the winter time my menu has certain buttons that relate to winter time? Winter sale, winter products. Then when we get to the spring, you know, the spring sale, I swap out the menu to have different items. So I can jump I can ha I can easily make that to be different things. It's just through here, through appearance. We're in the dashboard, and then Appearance, Menus. Let's click on Appearance, then Menus. And I will say Manage them by going to Dashboard, Appearance, Menus. So the first time we see this, it's a little complex, so let me explain it in general, then we'll do it. We saw up on our menu, it automatically put all of the pages that exist, including sample page, which I don't want. So it doesn't know what we want, so it puts everything. The way this screen works is, the very first time, we've never done any menu organization. So it says, first create a menu. So we're going to create a menu in a moment, we'll call it main menu, and then we'll create. And then we will add the pages or the posts or products or whatever to it. And then we have to say where will the menu be visible? At the top, at the bottom, at the left? So doing it the first time needs a little explanation. And so our first step, as I'll write it here in the notes, create a menu. So name it. I'm going to say, actually, for step two, apply it to a location. Then step three, add items to the menu. And then four, arrange it as you wish. So a moment ago, I said it. I said create, add, apply. I would recommend this is the better way. Because if you never apply your menu, it won't be visible. Similar to when you install a plugin, you have to activate it. You install a theme, you have to activate it. You can create as many menus as you want, but if you never apply them to a location of your site, they're not visible. So I'll say this will be step two. And then we add stuff to the menu, and then we arrange the menu. This goes first, this goes second, this goes below that. So let's create a menu. Let's call this main menu. Like I said, we can have various menus we can have a main menu, a sale menu, a summer menu. We can have these links organized however we want and swap them in and out easily as we, may, as we need it. Create. I can be like appetizer. Yeah, exactly. So those are going to be based most likely on the categories. I've got these products. I've categorized them as, as appetizers entrees, whatever, and then as we'll see here, then we add them to the menu. But this is like this is like the folder that holds all of the things that will be visible in the menu. It can be like front page, right? We can call it front page. This could be the menu that appears on the front page. Home. The menu of the home, yeah, home menu. 
any way that you want to name these, just to remind you that this is the menu that appears in a certain place. So I'll create it. Step two in my notes. Where are we, where are we seeing it at? This theme has a location on the primary, which I suppose is at the top. Secondary, which is probably at the bottom. And you can have, when you're on a mobile device, I don't know why they call it handheld, but on a mobile phone, mobile device, you could have a different menu. Maybe on the big main website, you've got 10 things in the menu, but then on the mobile, you've got three, the most popular ones. Unfortunately, you usually don't get a very good description of where will it actually appear. They usually call them like main menu, primary, secondary. They rarely, and this depends on the theme developer, do they call it top menu, right menu, footer left menu? So you kind of have to sometimes turn it on and then go view it and then say, oh, I put it in the wrong one. But probably the primary menu is probably this one at the top. And the secondary might be at the right or the bottom somewhere. We'll figure that out. I'm going to save it at this point. There's nothing in the menu, but I've created a menu. I've set it to appear somewhere. I've created a menu. I've applied it to a location. Now time to add items. Let's, uh, from pages, let's switch over to view all. I want a home button. I want that menu to be visible. They can press the menu to go home. I want cart and checkout, good. I want my account, good. I want shop, good. I don't want sample. So you would activate the ones here and then click Add to Menu. So they're visible top to bottom in the editor, but here they will be visible left to right. So the first one at the top is the first one at the left, so left to right. That's the order right there. If I want it in a different order, if I want like shop to be very first, I can grab the little box and move it first. So from left to right, that'll be the first item. Let's say I do want them to check their account, but cart and checkout, I don't want those to be visible right away here. Maybe I want to hover over my account and then I can check out or cart. So watch this. If I drag an item below another item, notice it can either be the dotted line to the left or to the right. If it's to the left, if it's at the same level on the left, it's going to be visible next to it. If I drag it so that it's on the side there indented, it says sub item. And now when I hover over my account, it pops open. It drops down to show checkout. So let's say I want to put the cart and the checkout as sub menu items of my account. So be careful here because if you drag it and put it that way, it, this is below it here, but it's not inside of it. It has to be indented. You just have to find the right spot. You don't let go of the mouse until you see where it is. And if you're putting it right there, why isn't it indenting? It hasn't kind of hit the, the, the trigger area to detect it. You just have to kind of move it around until you find it. There it is there. That's a sub-item. Be careful because you can do this. What's happening here? Sub-sub-item. Sub, sub you hover over my account, this opens up. You hover over this, this opens up, and it shows you that. That might be something you want. Maybe if you've got a very complex hierarchy of products, you have shop, and then below that you have you know, sugar-free section, and then you have 
section that actually tastes good. And then below that, you have a subsection of that with cakes and cookies in there. And then in cakes under that, you have gluten-free. So you can make a really deep hierarchy as long as you just indent them over, drag them over to where you want them. See right there, whoops, I took it out of the complete indenting, and there it is in the right spot. Can save that. Well, I also want when a person hovers over <coughs> shop to show me the categories of my products. So right now I've been adding pages to my menu. We have posts, custom links, categories, WooCommerce endpoints. Categories. This is not the category that you think. This is the category for blog posts. That term is a little bit generic in the world of WordPress. Categories can be used for products or posts or other things. So this menu item here, this selector, is referring to categories related to our posts. This is an example of WordPress is pretty complex, and it doesn't show you everything at once. And sometimes you have to turn on you have to turn on a check mark for something to show you that most people wouldn't know about or care about. So I want the product categories, not the post categories. At the at the very top of the screen, all the way to the top, we have screen options, a little tab at the very top. Most screens in WordPress have screen options where they reveal more things to do plus a help thing up there. But if you go to the top here, I'm still editing the menu. We go to the screen options. If you click on screen options, you get a little tab. Show me boxes for pages, posts, products, custom links, categories, product categories. So I can put individual products in my menu. You probably don't want that. You want collections of products, which are product categories. Uh, we're never really going to use WooCommerce endpoints. That's pretty advanced. You can turn it off to never see it. You may or may not use categories of blog posts. Turn that off if you want. Do you want to put individual posts? One individual article? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Do you want to add tags? We've made tags, but do we want them in the menu? That's up to you. When you turn those on and off, then the boxes at the left here change. The one I definitely want is product categories. And then when I view all, so now under shop, I need to select to activate these. Cakes, cookies, pies. and then move them where they need to be. All three of these will be part of my shop. So once I add them, I'll drag them below shop and then indent them so that they drop down. And you can further refine this menu if you want, but we've done a lot with it, so save it. Make sure it has been set to some location, and then we will visit. Question? Say that again. After you selected them here, you click Add to Menu, and then you drag them where you need them to be. Mm -hmm. Yes, this is under View All. Most used sometimes doesn't have everything, so I, I usually jump to View All. Cakes and cookies, and you click on Shop. You select them, check marks there, and then click Add to Menu, and then drag them into below the shop.
Okay, so then you can visit site, and now the menu is a little bit more cleaned up. It doesn't have sample page. When you do uh, hover over right here, my account, it opens up to show you checkout and cart. So they're not always there, cluttering up the interface. When you hover over shop, you see those categories. You can still click on shop, and it'll show you all the products. But instead, if you click hover over and click on cookies, it only shows you cookies. You go to shop cakes, it only shows you cakes, which there are none at the moment. The description of cakes is visible there. If I had put in a thumbnail to that product, it would have appeared here as well. So there's still plenty more to learn, but looking at the clock, mm -hmm. the class is about to end. So the final topic that we'll talk about is, well, what if I want to take this home with me? Uh, we would need to make a copy of this project and take it home with us. Um, ideally, when I teach this class, it's three or four weeks long, and ideally what we do is I do the lecture on how to make a copy of the site, and then I do a lecture on, when we come back, how to, how to use the file. But obviously it's the last day of the class, so we'll only be able to do one half of that about, this is how we back up, this is how we copy the site. And then if you want to then uncompress it or bring it back, um, I, I'll give you a link to how to do that yourself. I can't, can't fully show you. Uh, but, you know, worst case scenario, you did this work today and maybe you can't take it with you, you can practice it again on your own. Rewatch the video, maybe start it, start it again, and now that you have a second pass at it, it'll make more sense, you'll be able to do it again. So if you're not able to take this home with you, that's okay, just practice it again. But here's the, here's the plug-in that I would use to move a site from one computer to another to transfer a WordPress site. We have a plug-in called Duplicator. It's free, although there's a paid version. Usually the paid version is if you've got a really big site with a lot of content, like hundreds of pictures and hundreds of uh, products. But for smaller sites, the free version works fine. And what we do is we install and then activate the plugin, and then use Duplicator to make, a, to make an archive, that's a fancy word, a, a backup of it, and I'll show you how this works in a moment, uh, to make an archive of the site. The archive has um, my site plus the date, is it today, the 17th, dot zip, and installer.php. Running this plugin will consolidate all of the pictures, and all of the text and all of the data in the database into one file, something.zip. So your whole site will be that. To bring it back to life, you don't just extract this folder, you use this file to reinstall the site. So Duplicator will give you two files. Right now our site is like 10,000 files, literally. And it will uh, shrink it down to two, the zip file, with everything in one zip file, and then the installer to bring it back to life. So let's do this. Let's go over here to back to the dashboard to add a new plugin. Dashboard add uh, dashboard plugin add new plugin. Um, and over here under search, search for duplicator.
there's many software that will let you copy a WordPress site. I'm seeing 59 results. This is the one that I want right here. Duplicator WordPress migration plugin. Let's you clone it, move it, copy it, etc. Back it up. So once you search duplicator, that's the one we want. Duplicator, click install, and then activate. I cannot find it. Did you search for duplicator? So once we find that right there, we will click install, and then we will click activate. It has five stars, one million usages, and 2,500 reviews. Small sites. As soon as it's a little bigger, ask about money. Yes. Um, how big it is, I believe it, when your site is over 100 megabytes, which is relatively large, most people um, are not going to have a site with lots, lots and lots of products. That's how you get to about 100 megabytes or so. So I believe the price is about $39. So not too expensive, but not free. But the free one does work very well for smaller sites, and I believe 100 megabytes is the threshold. Then you can activate. So use duplicator to make an archive. An archive is made out of that. To make the archive, now we have a brand new menu. Duplicator menu. So once you activate it, it just takes you back over here. Okay, that's fine. But then we have a new item here, duplicator. Inside of duplicator, we go to packages. Once it's installed and activated, we get the duplicator menu. And we go to the packages, and here we have create new. Create new package. The next items here are we can leave these variety of defaults, but once we've got create new, it says, what would you like to call your zip file? You can change this if you want. It was backwards actually. I wrote it in the notes backwards, but in any event, it gives you the name of some kind of file. It gives you already the date, 2020.01.17, the name of your site, .zip. So if you want to name a, change the name of your zip file right there, you could. Default is fine. All of these other settings here, they're, they're hidden because the defaults are fine. If you know what you're doing, you can go in here and do other stuff like automatically save it to my Dropbox. However, that is in the paid version. Or um, how do you change your archive and all this stuff. So some of this is for the pro version, the $39 version. So you don't need to change anything here. This is extra. So I click Next. It's going to scan your site and find all of the pieces of your site. So the reason we're using a plugin is because you cannot simply go back to the XAMPP folder and just copy this to my flash drive. That is not my complete site. That only has some of the files and such. It doesn't have the database. It doesn't have the database and that other sort of behind the scenes stuff. Duplicator will gather all of that. It found all of your files, and it found the database. So right now, oh, my site, I guess it is 113. Oh, this is uncompressed. And then after this, it will also find the, uh, the database. That's how big that is. And here's where it says, when multi-gig, OK, I guess it's in the gigabyte size. Ask you for the duplicator pro, but right now I got all the check marks that say good. If any of them said warning or error, well, we'll talk about that later. But we'll do a build. Go ahead and click build. It's going to consolidate all of those files, put together the installer file, which will then be like these will be like uh, 
the, the instructions or the process that it brings the site back to life. Are you using it to copy from one server to another server? Yes, you can do that as well. If you have your site on Bluehost server, you use Duplicator and then you copy that archive to GoDaddy and then you can move a site from server to server. It's specifically for WordPress. This one I cannot open in my Mac, We're having some sort of issue on, on your Mac that it's not letting you get any plugins. So th there is that issue here. So, so the one we're making in the in the class one classroom right now, yeah, maybe we will still have a problem transferring it to your Mac. So we'd have to do the research of why does it have that error. So I don't have an answer yet. But I would still copy the file to your flash drive, maybe. And if, we, if you do figure it out, then you could use it. So when it says package complete, it says, OK, we have an installer file and we have an archive file. The 100 megabytes got compressed into half the size. And then there's the installer file. I need to click on each of these, and then the web browser will will download it. It'll run it. It'll save it to the desktop or somewhere. So I'm going to click to download the installer. It should do both, but depending on your web browser, it might block the pop-up. Because when two things download at the same time, sometimes the web browser stops it because it thinks it's spam. So you can try the one click, but for me, I feel safer doing each one. I'm in Firefox, and Firefox says, would you like to open it or save it? I'm going to save it. Other web browsers may pop up at the bottom to say, do you want to run it or save it? You want to save it. Both of these we want to save. Wherever they get saved into, then I want to copy that to my flash drive. If you brought a flash drive, if you want to take this file with you, that's the point of this, to make a backup of the whole project. And then, what do I do with this? There is a link right here, which is this is as far as we can get with it, but I'll copy this link into the network folders note file that I'll give you in a moment. And um, to bring the site back to life, you would have to follow those instructions. We're, we're out of time at the moment about what do I do with the file. But again, if, if you do it from scratch, you get more of the practice about how it all works.